Yo, what's up guys, Nash here coming at you with a brand new video and today we're talking about the three reasons why you're probably not making sales. So as you probably know, Shopify is not the easiest thing in the world, but it is simple. There are like certain things that you can do that if you fix them, you will probably increase your, your rate of actually being able to make sales. So let's jump in the computer and uh, yeah, dive in. The three reasons you're not making sales. Now there's there's actually more than three reasons, but there's actually three phases that I believe um, of levels of not being able to make a sale. So the first one is that you get no visitors. This is when you're, you're doing ads on like Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and you're running traffic, but you get no, no visitors to your actual website. Okay, and number two is when you have visitors, maybe you have a lot, maybe you have a little, but uh, you have no add to carts or no interest in actually purchasing your, uh, your product. And number three is that you have add to carts, but those add to carts aren't converting to sales. So let's go ahead and break down each of these three and then I'll talk about what I actually think is, uh, is going on. Number one, if you get no visitors, there's, there's basically three reasons. Number one is that um, your product doesn't match uh, the audience, okay? And I've talked about this before, but basically you really have to make sure that your product and your audience is a perfect match. And if it's not, then it's it's just not gonna work. And I've talked about that in other videos, so uh, if you want, you can go ahead and check those out as well. Um, the second one is that your, um, your actual ad copy, so yeah, your ad copy, uh, I don't know, I'll just say sucks. So a lot of times people get confused. They're like, why are you even running an ad? It's not actually to sell a product, contrary to popular belief. The only reason you're running an ad is to get somebody off of Instagram and onto your website. So how do you do that? Well, number one is it's gotta, it's gotta have some sort of hook, right? It's gotta have a reason for somebody to like it. And usually that hook can be done through a photo. Now, a lot of people use like white background photos, just generic stock photo looking things. And those don't, I don't know, maybe they work for some people, but I haven't found any success with them working because they just look generic, they look cheap, and nobody really wants to buy something that's just a stock photo. So if you do a Google search and find some like nicer photos of the product, or you could even take some photos yourself, that's much uh, a much better option in terms of actually being able to get people to read the caption, which is what you want, so that you can, um, you know, so that they actually go to your profile and click through to the link. Um, but in your ad copy, you actually wanna have some scarcity and urgency. You have to have some sort of reason for people to buy. And number two, you have to have like some sort of great deal that's going on. And number three, you have to have FOMO, fear of missing out. If they don't buy now, they're missing out on a trend, they're missing out on uh, you know something that all their friends are doing, something like that. So there's gotta be some sort of incentive for them to get off of Instagram and stop scrolling through and actually go onto your website to, to purchase whatever it is. So uh, you gotta work on your ad copy. And number three, uh, so we got your product, you got your uh, your ad copy. Number three is uh, your influencer sucks. We'll just say that. Um, and, and what do I mean by this? Well, there's, there's two things. Maybe the influencer is great. They, they have awesome engagement, they're, they're legit, but your product is, is not great for them. So it appears that the influencer sucks. So you just have to find a new influencer that's more in line with your product. Or number two, the influencer actually uh, his bot followers, or they're in engagement groups, or they're doing some sort of sort of some sort of shenanigans where uh, you know their their numbers are bigger than what they actually are, and they're not driving purchases. So in this case, you really have to make sure that you're running traffic to pages that are legitimate, and you do that through um, a couple couple different things I've talked about in other videos. If you want, you can check out my video about uh, you know influencer and finding influencers, and that talks more in depth about that. Um, so these are the three reasons. If you get no visitors, these are what I would focus on, and uh, you know, focus on these until you can actually start getting some visitors. Now, the second phase is if you have visitors, um, but you have no add to carts. And by add to cart, I mean uh, people actually showing interest in purchasing your your product or like you know, submitting some contact information, something like that. So there's a few different reasons that if you have visitors but no add to carts. Number one is that uh, it's pretty obvious, but your your product uh, price is too expensive. Okay, a lot of people will just try to uh, you know price gouge on it, and and you don't really want to do that because remember this is interruption marketing. Um, this is trying to get people that are just like going about their day, looking at Instagram, whatever, and onto your website. They're not immediately going to want to spend fifty dollars unless they're really really captivated by it. So come in with a cheaper offer, and then you can upsell later. 
Um, but don't try to price gouge at the beginning. Usually as a rule of thumb, I like to charge two to three times more whatever the price is um, that I'm actually buying it for. So uh, make sure that, and, and you can test this, like, um, you know, if you have visitors, just make sure that you're constantly testing what price works best. Uh, sometimes I'll change prices like two or three times throughout the campaign just to see what works. Um, and the second one is that uh, there's no incentive to buy, okay? Um, and this goes back to the, the urgency and scarcity thing that I talked about with the, the ad. But if somebody doesn't have an incentive to buy and buy right now, then they're probably not going to. They're going to wait. They're going to get distracted by their mom calling them on the phone. They're going to you know, get distracted by whatever it is, and they're not going to buy. But if you have an incentive for them to buy right now through, uh, maybe you could have a countdown timer. You could have something... Um, I don't know, you, you could uh, say there's a limited amount, maybe like 20 left. Um, there's all kinds of different tactics that you can go through to get people to buy now. Um, also social proof, if you have some social proof on there through reviews, um, that's always good. So just make sure that you have some sort of incentive to buy. And number three is that it, um, it looks scammy, okay? And what I mean by this is that if your website has a bunch of neon colors, a bunch of color schemes that doesn't, doesn't work, a bunch of blurry photos, um, just a product description that's super generic. Um, if it has any of these things, it, the, your website looks scammy and people don't want to buy from a scam, obviously. Um, so just make sure that your website is looking professional, it's looking clean, it's not cluttered, there's not all kinds of crazy colors. You stick to maybe one or two main colors and, and kind of go from there. Uh, but just make sure that your website looks legitimate. If it doesn't, then you're probably not going to be able to make sales, even if you have visitors to the website. Uh, and number three, the, the third phase here is if you have add to cart, so people have actually added your product to cart, maybe they've submitted some contact information, maybe they've even gone so far as to get to the shipping page, um, but you're not making any sales, right? This is a problem with a lot of people that are doing free plus shipping. They might have 30 add to carts, but they're making no sales. And why is that? Well, um, number one is that the, uh, the shipping price is too expensive, okay? So, you know, if you're charging $12 for shipping, it's probably too much. What you want to do is you want to you want to have some sort of value gap. So if somebody believes that the product is $20, they're not going to spend $20 in shipping. They might spend $10, but you really have to justify that, right? So if they feel that $10 is a good deal to get that product, then they might, uh, you know, actually purchase from you. But again, you're going to want to test with this. So I might, you know, switch my shipping prices a few times during a campaign just to see what works. Also, um, another little trick with the shipping price is I like to do random numbers. So instead of like 1099, I'll do like 1079 or 1072 or something, so just like a random number, right? Because if you do that, like 1097 is a retail price. Um, it doesn't look as legitimate as if you had like 1072, which is kind of a random price, which could be legitimate for shipping. Because when you ship something out with UPS or whatever, it's usually a random price, unless you're doing like flat rate boxes. So uh, your shipping is too expensive. Or number two, um, shipping costs was a surprise, okay? And what I mean by this is I've reviewed a few people's websites and what I see a lot is that um, either number one, they'll say like free worldwide shipping on all offers, which uh, is a complete lie because when people go, they actually have to pay shipping and then they're like, screw this, I'm leaving. Or number two, they just don't even mention that you have to pay for shipping. They don't say it's free, but they don't mention that you have to. Um, which again, the person is surprised when they have to pay for shipping. When they're expecting that it's gonna be free, they're not gonna have to pay for anything, and then they see that they actually have to pay for shipping. At that point, they get kind of pissed off and then they'll leave. So just be straight up in your product description and be like, yo, um, you know, it's a free offer, just cover, use the word cover, people never like uh, using the word pay. So just cover shipping and then say, be honest, say it'll take like two to four weeks or you know, 10 to 30 days or whatever, however you wanna say it. Um, and say it's due to you know, low inventory or we're restocking or something like that, um, where you can actually justify why, why it'll take that long. But be honest, tell them that it'll take a long time and that they do have to pay for it. That way they're not surprised when they actually get to, uh, to the checkout and actually have to pay for shipping. So hopefully these tips were helpful for you guys. Hopefully you kind of, 
found yourself in one of these three categories and now you can know, uh, you know kind of how to go forward. If it was helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and leave me a like as well. It lets me know that you like this content and you want me to keep continuing to make it on a daily basis, which we've been doing so far and you guys have been going crazy, been getting a bunch of DMs. At Nash Hagen, if you have any questions, go ahead and DM me. Um, and lastly, uh, I am doing consulting calls now. So uh, if you want to schedule a free consulting call, I'm going to be doing it on a limited basis. Um, but you can do that in the description below. You can check out there's a link to schedule a call with me if you so desire. So uh, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I need you in the morning. Oh, oh.